Good morning. This morning reflection is the continuation of the book of First Chronicle. First Chronicle is filled with genealogies and it focuses on the reign of King David including the great covenant with David in chapter 17 verse 11 to 14 and David's magnificent prayer of praise in chapter 29 verse 10 to 19 last time we have seen the first part David's royal roots first chronicles chapter 1 to 9 this morning reflection will be the second part David's righteous reign Chronicle chapter 10 to chapter 29 First let us see First Chronicle chapter 11 to 16 David's reign established Now if you look at chapter 11 verse 1 2 and 3 you will find david was crowned as a king over all the 12 tribes of israel then all israel gathered themselves to david unto hebron saying behold we are thy bones and thy flesh and moreover in time past even when Saul was king thou was he that led us out and brought us in Israel and the Lord thy God said unto thee thou shalt feed my people Israel and thou shalt be ruler over my people Israel. Therefore came all the elders of Israel to the king of, to Hebron, and David met a covenant with them in Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel according to the word of the Lord by Samuel. Now, let's see what happened after David was anointed as king over Israel. First Chronicles chapter 11 verse 9 says, So David waxed greater and greater, for the Lord of hosts was with him. Indeed, David was great because of God. In chapter 11, verse 10 to 47, mention for us all the mighty men of Israel. In chapter 12, verse 22, you can also see, For at that time, day by day, there came to David to have him until it was a great host like the host of God. They came to David day by day. Mark these words, day by day, to help him, until it was a great army like the army of God. First Chronicles chapter 14, verse 17 says, And the fame of David went out into all lands, and the Lord brought the fear of him upon all nations. Now let us see the second point. David's reign expanded. Chapter 17 to chapter 21. In these few chapters, you will see how David's kingdom being expanded in the region. Chapter 18, verse 1 to 3 says, uh, let me read from King James Version. 
Now, after this, it came to pass that David smote the Philistine and subdued them, and took God and her towns out of the land of the Philistine, and he smote Moab, and the Moabites became David's servant, and brought gifts, and David smote Hadarijer, king of Joba, unto Hamat. As he went to establish his dominion by the river of Euphrates, and when the Syrians and the Damascus came to have Hadarijer, king of Joba, David slew of the Syrians two and twenty thousand men. David continued to expand his kingdom. David conquered one city after another city, victory after victory. This is what we see from chapter 17 to chapter 21. One of the excellent things in his life is that you will never come across in the scripture that he was wounded or hurt in the battle. So my question here is, why? How it was possible? The answer is found in 1 Chronicles chapter 18, verse 6 and verse 13. In chapter 18, verse 6, it says, Thus the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. Can you see the preservative hand of God upon David's life? The Lord preserved David wherever he went. Again, in chapter 18, verse 13 says, Thus the Lord Priyav, David, whithersoever he went. Don't you and I need the preservative hand of God upon our life and upon all the days of our lives on this earth? Definitely, yes, we need God's preserving power. Since 2020, we have been worried about the spread of COVID-19 pandemic. God's words give us sheer promises even for these things. In Psalm number 16, verse 1, David prayed, Pray up me, O God. For in thee do I put my trust. The Hebrew word that David used for priyav in these verses is packed with meaning. It says in real meaning, put a head around me, a wall of protective thorns, guard me and keep me. Observe my every move, all my comings and goings. David fully believed that God preyav the righteous, and Scripture says David was half and preyav in all his ways. We see in Psalm number one hundred twenty-one, verse four to seven. He that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper, thy set upon the right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall pray of thee from all evil. He shall pray of thy soul. Before we move to to the next point, let's look on how huge was David's army. It is mentioned in chapter 
21 verse 5. And Joab gave the sum of the number of the people unto David, and all they of Israel were a thousand thousand and a an hundred thousand men that drew short, and Judah was four hundred three score and ten thousand men that drew short. We have seen in the first place how his kingdom was established. Secondly, how his kingdom was expanded. Now, let us see number three. David's reign and force. Chapter 22 to chapter 27. From these six chapters, we see how David and force rules over the nation by appointing capable leaders to help him run the kingdom. He appoints 12 leaders to oversee the 12 tribes of Israel. You will find in chapter 27, verse 16 to 22. Then after that, he appointed several leaders to take charge of different, different jobs in his kingdom. For example, he assigned certain people to take care of the king's treasures and also the field, the crops, and also the cities and over the villages. He also assigned those who would take care of the farmers in the fields, the wineyards, the animals, the horses, and the flocks. He also surrounded himself with counselors, with wise men, with general. We find in chapter 27, verses 25 to 34. Now, let us move to the last point. David's reign and trusted. Chapter 28 to chapter 29. In these closing two chapters, the writer focused on the succession plan of David to his son Solomon. First, we see the warning given by David to Solomon in chapter 28. He warned his son against unfaithfulness. Chapter 28, verse 9. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord shares all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. David warned Solomon not to forsake the Lord and become unfaithful to him. David knew the day his son forsake the Lord, that will be the day his son will face the downfall in his life. Secondly, let us see the last words to Solomon. His last words to Solomon came in few ways. First, David was concerned concerning the temple. He first stated the purpose of the temple in chapter 29 verse 1. Furthermore, David the king said unto all the congregation, Solomon my son, 
whom alone God had chosen, is yet young and tender, and the work is great, for the place is not for man, but for the Lord God. Secondly, he mentioned his partnership in the temple. Look at his generosity. What he said to Solomon in chapter 29, verses 2 to 5. Verse 2. Now I have prepared with all my might for the house of my God the gold for things to be made of gold and the silver for things of silver and the brass for things for brass, the iron for things of iron, and the wood for things of wood, the onyx stone, and the stone to be set, glistering stones, and of diverse colors, and all manner of precious stones, and marbles stone in abundance. Verse 3. Moreover, because I have set my affection, affection on what? To the house of my God. I have of my own proper good of gold and silver, which I have given to the house of my God. Over and above all that, I have prepared for the holy house. Verse 4. Even three thousand talents of gold, of the gold of Ophir, and seven thousand talents of refined silver, to overlay the walls of the house with Verse 5. The gold for things of gold, and the silver for things of silver, for all manner of work to be made by the hand of artificers. And who then is willing to consecrate his service this day unto the Lord? Then in chapter 29, verses 6 to 9, we see the generous giving of his leaders. Verse 6, Then the chief of the fathers and princes of the tribes of Israel and the captains of thousands of hundreds with the rulers of the king's war offer willingly and gave for the service of the house of God of gold 5,000 talents and 10,000 grams and of silver, 10,000 talents, and of brass, 18,000 talents, and 100,000 talents of iron. And they with whom precious stones were found gave them to the treasure of the house of the Lord. By the hand of Jehel the Gershonite, then the people rejoice for that they offer willingly because with perfect heart they offer willingly to the Lord. And David the king also rejoice with great joy. Why they are rejoicing? Because they have offered willingly to the Lord. King David also rejoiced greatly. Here we can see, generous givers are always joyful people. Giving people are far happier than non-givers. In Acts chapter 20 verse 35 says, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Hudson Taylor, a 19th century missionary to China, lived a simple life, 
giving away two thirds of his income. He said, "My experience was that the less I spend on myself, and the more I gave to others, the fuller of happiness and blessing did my soul become." Thirdly, David encouraged the people to praise God. We see in chapter twenty-nine, verse twenty, and David said to all the congregation. Now bless the Lord your God, and all the congregation, bless the Lord God of their fathers, and bow before their heads, and worship the Lord and the King. We have seen the last word to Solomon was not only concerning the temple, also concerning the throne. We see in chapter twenty nine, verse twenty three to twenty five. Then Solomon sat on the throne of the Lord as king, instead of David his father, and prosper, and all Israel obeyed, and all the princes and the mighty men. And all the sons likewise of King David submitted themselves unto Solomon the king. And the Lord magnified Solomon exceedingly in the sight of all Israel, and bestowed upon him such royal majesty as had not been on any king before him in Israel. Lastly. We see how the writer describe David's life. At the end of this book, it is found in First Chronicles, chapter twenty-nine, verse verses twenty-eight to thirty. Verse twenty-eight, and he died in a good old age, full of days, riches, and honor. And Solomon his son reigned in his stead. Now, the acts of David the king, first and last, behold, they are written in the book of Samuel the seer, and in the book of Nathan the prophet, and in the book of God the seer, with all his reign. And his might, and the times that went over him, and over Israel, and over all the kingdoms of the countries. What a way to end one's life! When it comes to David's life, he indeed ended his life in triumph. He ended his life in a good old age, full of days, full of riches and honor. May your life and my life, and in this way as well, Amen.